Hello, my name is Riva Gujon, and today I'm joined by my colleague Lauren Goodrich to discuss Putin and Erdogan and their counter coup strategies. So, Lauren, following the Turkey coup, it was Putin who was the first to call up Erdogan. And now we have a meeting coming up the first week of August where Putin and Erdogan are supposed to get together. I can only imagine what the two are going to be discussing. Russia was one of the very first countries to react altogether mm -hmm. to the coup taking place, despite it being a very late hour inside of Russia. Uh, the Russian government was making statements at first, watching the coup very closely, very intently. Uh, Putin's press secretary was was um, on the podium immediately as soon as the coup was taking place. Um, and since, we've seen Russia come out very harshly against the coup um, and really supporting Erdogan altogether. It almost seems as though Putin and Erdogan are picking up right where they left off. Of course, Fundamentally and geopolitically, Russia and Turkey have a lot of, uh, you know, issues between them and overlapping spheres of influence that can create a lot of friction. Uh, but since the, the relative reconciliation we've mm -hmm. seen between the two, we're sort of back to this paradigm of Putin and Erdogan, two countries with big geopolitical ambitions, but who know that internal security is everything for them and mm -hmm. probably have a lot of lessons to exchange. Very much so. Um, Putin has really been watching the coup that took place inside of Turkey and, and, and reflecting on his own country. He's been um, ramping up quite a few measures inside of his government, inside of the security services, the military, in order to protect himself should anything try to happen inside of Russia. Now, this isn't going to say that there is going to be a coup inside of Russia, mm -hmm. but Putin has that inherent paranoia that every single Russian leader in history has that his own internal circle can turn against him. And this was something Yeltsin also guarded against as well. Yeltsin guarded against this very closely. I mean, he pretty much dismantled the predecessor of the KGB in order to prevent the security services from coming after him. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing something very interesting with Putin. Even though he's an FSB guy, there are quite a few purges taking place within the FSB in order to kind of make sure the ranks are, are loyal to him. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Putin is hedging his bets in case the FSB or in case the military or even the interior services decide to turn against him or choose a different faction in which he's creating his own national guard. Mm -hmm. um, his own personal army um, is what it's being referred to inside of Russia in which they are going to only answer to the presidency. And so basically the idea here is that you raise the stakes for anybody who is plotting a coup or even thinking about about it, if you can create the assumption that they have to factor in another very viable and strong security force mm -hmm. that has the means to put down a coup, you may you know, be, have to give pause to your plans. But it's not just a coup. Um, mm -hmm. What's interesting about the National Guard is that they're going to be deployed on the streets during the elections. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is if you have the Russian people start to rise up against the Kremlin to where it's not even inside the Kremlin um, forming a coup or within the military forming a coup, but the actual re regular population like we saw in 2011, 2012, then you can have the National Guard deploy against them in case the military or interior forces decide not to listen to their orders or try to go against and crack down on these types of protests. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it reminds me a little bit of what Chavez did in Venezuela, mm -hmm. where he developed the Bolivarian militia. And, you know, there it wasn't the most elite militia by any means. You know, it was sort of a, a peasant's militia. And the idea, though, was if you could bring out a large number of people into the streets, if you were to be threatened, then the military is not going to be able to just very quickly take over institutions and call it a day. And that's what we also saw in Turkey, because mm -hmm. What we when we could see the air force, you know, substantial portions of the the army, navy, gendarmerie, the military, you know, in bulk, um, there was no, there was a lot of question. I think Erdogan had of whether he could even count on the military or parts of it to put down the coup. It was primarily the police and the intelligence services who came in uh, to to counter it. But really, the card was. The, the people that mm -hmm. Erdogan played and, and using the call to prayer to bring people out into the streets. And I think there's a question now moving forward of whether 
Erdogan will resort to more formal means of creating a sort of private army or militia. You know, there have been rumors about this in development in the past, but I wonder if he's going to be taking some notes from Putin on how to insulate himself better. And I think that that was a, a very difficult question for Putin because it, it came down to the question, who does he trust? Mm -hmm. um, everyone would, would naturally say the FSB because he is an FSB guy, but his National Guard is not made up of any FSBers. It's all made up of people from the interior ministry and really pulling out of those forces instead. And so it's a very interesting evolution inside of Russia in which um, you see that Putin doesn't trust his own um, his own rank and file that he came from. Hmm. You know, and it's interesting now as we look forward for Turkey, it's going to take a lot of time to mm -hmm. repair the military. I mean, we're talking about thousands of military personnel being purged. Many of them are admirals, generals. And the people who are actually overseeing operations in northern Syria and northern Iraq, um, where in, in Syria in particular, where Russia has been very active. And so as Turkey is very distracted now in cleaning house um, and just refilling these posts and trying to find qualified people to fill those posts, uh, you know, that could give Russia more room to maneuver in Syria, which we know has been a major bargaining chip in his in Putin's negotiation with the United States. Which could make Russia and Turkey uh, very close friends once again, which would likely be a big concern for the United States because Russia has continually in the past used Turkey against uh, the United States in order to bring the United States to the table to talk. Friends with conditions, though, because we, we have seen <laughs> Turkey and Russia um, definitely rub up against each other. Mm -hmm. Russia remains very concerned about Turkey's participation in any sort of Black Sea buildup. Um, in the Caucasus in the, as well. In Nagorno-Karabakh, yeah. So still lots of uh, areas where the two are going to be on guard, but certainly a lot of room for Putin and Erdogan to come closer uh, and leverage each other, uh, each other when it comes to security cooperation. Well, so this will be an interesting meeting to watch. First week of August, we'll be watching Putin and Erdogan. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.